Hello there everyone, my name is Luke. Thank you for clicking on one of my videos. Today we are doing something a little bit different, starting a new type of video for me where I look at old games and see how they stand up in 2019. Today we will be going back to 2002 and 2015's Medal of Honor Allied Assault. I will be discussing all aspects of the mechanics and story in this video, so I recommend playing the game first if you are wary of spoilers. Let's get started. Medal of Honor Allied Assault was developed by 2015 and published by EA Games on January the 22nd, 2002. It was a PC exclusive and the franchise's first outing on that platform, though not the first Medal of Honor title ever released. The first game, named simply Medal of Honor, was released for the PlayStation 1 in October of 1999, and a sequel slash prequel named Medal of Honor Underground followed shortly after in October of 2000, with a Game Boy Advance version released two years later. Both titles were developed by DreamWorks Interactive, which is interesting for two reasons. The first is Steven Spielberg's involvement in creating the story of the first game. The second is DreamWorks Interactive's own history and development over the past two decades or so, being bought out by EA in February 2000 and renamed EA Los Angeles, before eventually ending up as DICE Los Angeles, a studio that many will know for developing the confusingly titled series of games including Battlefield 4, Battlefield 1 and Battlefield V, I mean 5? V? Is that V for victory? I mean, you couldn't argue that its release was victorious. I mean, like every time they update it, something goes wrong. The Steven Spielberg connection is perhaps the most important factor when talking about the Medal of Honor series. Saving Private Ryan had come out in 1998 and completely revolutionised the way that audiences engaged with the Second World War and changed forever the way that war was visualised. The release of the TV series Band of Brothers, produced by Spielberg and Tom Hanks, who had played the main character in Private Ryan in 2001, was a consolidation of this new style and the influence influence of both of these two pieces of war media is written large in Allied Assault. The third level, Operation Overlord, is the best example of this. It is basically a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the opening scene of Private Ryan, down to the speech from the captain on the landing craft, 30 seconds! 30 seconds! piling out of the landing craft, moving from cover to cover behind obstacles before finally reaching the sea wall and blasting your way through. The first person perspective of the game reflects the placement of the camera in the Omaha Beach scene in Private Ryan, which itself was maybe the most groundbreaking decision that Spielberg made in that film. There's even a section seemingly from the POV of a soldier making his way toward the sea wall. The audience is in there for the entire trek, with occasional cutaways to the perspective of the German soldiers in their bunkers, high above the Americans. It gives the sequence a documentary feel, which is certainly not an original observation on my part, but perhaps in part explains the audience's visceral reaction to the scene and how it is remembered today. Everyone remembers the opening of Private Ryan, no doubt in no small part because of the way that the film made you feel like you were there. Allied Assault calls upon this memory and compounds it because for the player, they essentially are there for as long a time as you need to get to the relative safety of the seawall. It is not just the structure of this part of the level that is the same, it is the aesthetics and design as well. The beach assault shares Private Ryan's preference for muted colours and the fog of war helps to create the feeling of an attack in the early morning, though I imagine that this is more a side effect of the abilities of the id Tech 3 engine than any deliberate choice on the part of the developers. But really, it is the geography of Private Ryan's Omaha Beach, as it is reflected in Allied Assault's Omaha Beach that interests me here, because it isn't actually that reflective of the actual geography of Omaha Beach as it was in June of 1944. This is a photograph named Taxis Into Hell and Back into the jaws of death, taken at approximately 7.40am at the easy red section of Omaha Beach. A great shadow looms in the distance, a forbidding blackness that stands as an almost impassable barrier between the soldiers and victory. Saving Private Ryan evokes this image in its own version of Omaha Beach. A great cliff crouches above the American soldiers and the German soldiers rain bullets on their heads from high above. Omaha Beach in June 1944 wasn't actually like this. The idea that the whole beachhead was lined with these impassable cliffs while true in some areas, isn't actually very accurate. On the far western end of the beach sits Point Du Hoc, which is indeed an incredibly steep cliff, so steep in fact that it actually overhangs the beach below. It guarded a battery of heavy German guns and was immortalised in a level from Call of Duty 2. Along much of the rest of Omaha Beach, however, the vertiginous cliffs are more like gentle inclines. I've been there, and in places it is possible to just walk straight up into the land beyond. This is of course not to take away from the sacrifice and heroism of those who fought there, it is just important to recognise just how far Allied Assault is indebted to Private Ryan in particular for its design and aesthetic. 
I was 12 or 13 in 2002 and the Overlord level is the one that I remember best. It's definitely the level that I played most and it's also the longest in the game, with perhaps the greatest diversity of gameplay in the whole of Allied Assault. You start as a soldier who splashes into the meat grinder of Omaha, moving up to knocking out German defences above the beach. The next level puts you in the Bocage, the area of countryside behind the beachhead in Normandy. You move through the area, destroying German artillery, fighting through farms and villages, facing up against German armour, before or destroying a large battery of German Nebelwerfers, which is my new favourite word to say out loud. You are a part of a squad of soldiers the entire time, which is very different from the rest of the game as a whole. Sure, there are moments when you are fighting in part of a team, but invariably these soldiers are killed or you are separated from them for some reason. Most of this game you fight alone, and I think this is why I found the Overlord level so much fun to play and why I remember it the clearest. It's the only real time in the game that you feel like you are part of a force fighting in a coherent manner. Later games took this idea further and it bled over into different franchises. The early Call of Duty games baked this mechanic right into the gameplay and incidentally, Call of Duty 1 was released a year after Allied Assault and developed by Infinity Ward, every member of which had worked on Allied Assault. This leads me on to the second point I highlighted earlier and that is the place Allied Assault occupies in the evolution of the World War II shooter. If we were to visualise this evolution, Allied Assault would be at the top of the tree, with two branches representing the Call of Duty and Battlefield franchises splitting off of it. While Allied Assault certainly didn't invent the World War II shooter, it brought it into the 21st century and a lot of what Allied Assault did is used as a blueprint in many of the games that followed. Player-centric gameplay and narrative, highly linear level design, cinematic set piece is the globe-trotting sense of adventure, a rudimentary achievements feature in the form of medals. While the details may be different in later titles, the basic ingredients are all the same, with a few changes. Allied Assault and the first Call of Duty title use health packs, while Call of Duty 2 onwards switched to regenerating health, which itself came with its own set of mechanical tweaks, and I've already spoken at length about these in a previous video. The game also has some pretty interesting destructible structures in one level which I don't actually remember at all. The influence on Battlefield's Frostbite engine is obvious here. What is notable about Allied Assault I think is how wide-eyed it is about the horrors of war. While it doesn't exhibit any of the weapon fetishization and troubling USA, USA of particularly the later Call of Duty titles, it is by no means a condemnation of war and the sheer waste of it all either. I would go so far as to argue that it doesn't really have an opinion, merely showing the player war through a perfectly clear glass, with no tints or slants that might alter the image on the other side. The chaos and brutality of Omaha Beach as shown in the game is there I feel only because it is a restaging of the assault on Omaha as it is shown in Private Ryan. The enemies that you shoot as you make your way through the game, though they may shout in German, are never given any character. They are mere avatars, not the caricatures of evil that are discovered in other war shooters I can name. The music is phenomenal, beautiful swelling strings and triumphant brass and... In fact, I'm just going to play some of it here without talking, it's that good. Maybe even my favourite part of the entire game. It is the only form of war commentary that I can find in Allied Assault and even then I struggle. The implied romanticism of the orchestral score is stirring and victorious and creates a tempo and sets a mood. It is adventurous, swashbuckling even, the warmth of its analogue sound in complete contrast to the digital glitches and squawks of the modern era Call of Duty titles. It is notable that music in any form is completely absent on the Omaha beach level, the only sounds being the death rattle of the German guns, the dull thuds of shells exploding 
and the confused shouts and screams of soldiers fighting desperately for their lives. The tempo here is the player's own as they lurch from cover to cover before making a last all-out sprint for cover by the seawall. Technically speaking, Allied Assault shows its age, while mechanically speaking it remains solid. There are various tweaks you have to make to the config files in the game folders to make the game run in 1080, though I got random blue screens after doing this myself. When I was 12, I remember thinking that the game looked amazing, no doubt because of how quickly you are moved through its environments, and the sheer variety in those environments in the first place. From the heat of a North African village, to the icy waste of a Norwegian submarine base, to the lush bocage of Normandy, to the snowy town on the outskirts of Fort Schmerzen. From chilly dusk, to dawn grey, to the stifling heat of day, Allied Assault carries the player through such a variety of scenarios and at such a pace that you don't really have the time today to really inspect the environments for their rough edges and muddy textures. I forgive the game because of its charm despite the frustration of the sniper town level and the kind of wonky AI and the fact that getting hit puts your character into this animation that can stunlock you. 17 years later, Medal of Honor Allied Assault is still a blast to play. The M1 Garand rifle was my favourite weapon back then and it still is now. In fact all of the sound effects are top notch and have a viscerality to them that makes the shooting so satisfying. Shooting in games I'd say is at least 50% audio and Allied Assault has this in spades. The Overlord level level is still my favourite, though patience gained through age has allowed me to actually play the behind enemy lines level as the developers intended, instead of ramboing my way through. The Medal of Honor series lost its way after the high point of Allied Assault and, for me, Frontline, released on the PlayStation 2 in May of 2002. Medal of Honor Warfighter ended the franchise in 2012, a sadly undignified end for a series of games that had ultimately given birth to the very thing that killed it. But that is for another video. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, thanks so much for watching this far. I've had my turn to talk, now it's your turn. How do you remember Allied Assault, if you remember it at all? Maybe you disagree with my suggestion that it brought the World War II shooter into the modern age. Either way, I look forward to your comments. Engage with me on Twitter, make your own video in response to mine. I'm currently working on a few things at the moment, and I don't know which one I will ultimately decide to finish next. Until next time then.